banking industry in Canada is one among the most competitive job markets and sometimes it can be really hard to even secure an entry level position in the financial institutions. So in this video I'll be telling you how I got a full time bank job in Canada at the age of 21 and without any prior experience. And how can you do the same with or without experience and even if your studies do not align with the banking jobs. And if you like this video consider subscribing to this channel as more such videos are planned and I will be uploading those in the near future. So without wasting any time let's begin the video. First of all let me introduce myself to you all and tell a little bit about my background. So I came to Canada as an international student in August 2021 and I finished my studies in the business administration course in August 2022. During that time period I did a couple of jobs such as working at Tim Hortons, at an Indian restaurant, working as a security guard and I even did a sales job in which you have to visit various grocery stores and offer credit cards to the customers there. I would say that I learned a lot in that one year especially in the credit card sales job in which I actually came to know how to approach and convince the clients to buy the product that I'm offering. Even though these jobs offer a decent pay rate with which you can easily start your life in Canada. But I was always striving for more and looking for new opportunities because I did not see any professional growth in these sectors. Because you cannot keep on working in these basic jobs as one day you have to buy a car, a house and all the other necessities that you might not be able to afford with these basic jobs. And I thought that if I have to eventually climb up the ladder then why not do it now. And it was in August 2022 when I finished my studies and started looking for full-time jobs which offered me professional growth, a better pay rate and a pathway to permanent residency as well. I made a professional resume after watching tons of YouTube videos on how a resume should look like when applying for office jobs. And this is where most of the job seekers do a mistake while applying for the jobs and we will discuss about that further in this video. I researched and applied for a couple of jobs that included that of office administration, bookkeeping and that of a teller in a bank as well. Around one week passed and I was not receiving a great response from those hiring companies and then all of a sudden I received an email from a bank manager saying that you qualified for the first round of interviews for the position of a bank teller which is an entry level position in the banks in which you support clients to do their daily transactions. And I saw this as a perfect opportunity to showcase my skills. So it was a video interview in which they had sent me a list of five questions to which I had to record my answers and send those back to the hiring manager before the deadline which was a few days later. So I dressed up professionally, read a couple of articles on Google, how to answer the questions that are asked in the interview and I sat for the interview. Even though I knew that it is going to be a tough competition as I could see on Indeed that over 80 people had applied for the same position but I still decided to give it a shot. So I recorded my responses to those five questions and sent those back to the hiring manager hoping that I would get a reply soon from them whether they're going to move forward with my application or not. So after this three weeks had passed and I did not hear anything from them and had lost the hope again that I would be selected for the second round. But after this I received an email from the manager saying that we would like to know more about you and would like to invite me for an in-person interview uh, at the branch. And I was like I'm not gonna miss this chance. So I did a lot of preparation and went for the interview where I met the manager and the personal banking specialist. I got to know about the job roles, the career opportunities and what they have to offer to me in the position. And they got to know about myself, my past experiences, my weaknesses and what do I expect from them. So it was a 30 minutes long interview in which they asked me a couple of questions and thankfully I was able to answer all of them without any hesitation or self-doubt. And after the interview they told me that they're gonna select the best candidate as they had many more interviews as well and they're gonna let me know if I was selected for the position in a few days. I felt a bit relieved after the interview because I thought that I had done really good considering the level of anxiety I had in that time. But again did not hear anything from them for almost a month and lost the hopes again thinking that they might have found someone with more qualifications and experience because I was still new to the industry. Then after that one month I got a call from the manager saying that you have been selected for the position and would you like to join the branch as a customer service representative. I was so much surprised and glad that I got the position because I've seen that some people keep on applying for two to three years and then also face difficulty in getting the position. So I joined in November 2022 and since then I've been working as a customer service representative and it has been a really great journey. I am learning a lot of new stuff including managing my own finances which would have otherwise taken me a long time to learn. Alright so this was all regarding how I got a full-time bank job in one of the Canada's leading banks. Now let us talk about how can you do it as well even if you have any prior experience or not and I would recommend that you follow all of these tips to guarantee that you get a bank job and start your career in banking in Canada. And make sure you follow the last tip because by following that you will automatically get ahead of the 90% of the people applying for jobs 
it not, doesn't matter if you're applying for a CSR role or a financial advisor role. First one is build a professional resume. Now, what do I mean by that? You have to read tons of job descriptions and follow people on LinkedIn who are already in the positions that you are applying for. Read the descriptions and include the keywords from the descriptions into your resume to showcase that you already have those skills that the hiring managers are looking for. And the main thing about making a resume is that do not use the same resume to apply for all the jobs. You have to change your resume every time you are applying for a different position. Now what do I mean by that? For example, if you are applying for a job that is focused on customer service like that of a teller, so you have to lay more emphasis on skills such as customer satisfaction, clear communication and time management. But on the other hand, if you are applying for a role such as that of a financial advisor who opens accounts for their clients, processes loans and helps the clients in their investments. So you have to alter your resume according to what the position demands, such as product knowledge, persuasion skills and the ability to build trust and maintain strong relationships with the clients. Making a good resume is really important because it is the first point of contact between the hiring manager and you and it will decide whether or not you will be selected for the interview. There are many websites that help you build a good resume, so make sure that you use the technology to your best advantage when applying for the jobs. Now let's move forward to the second tip and that is regarding making a LinkedIn profile for yourself. Nowadays it is becoming a norm to showcase your skills, talent and experience through a LinkedIn profile to be considered by the potential recruiters. But make sure it is both personalized and professional at the same time and what I mean by that is do not post any funky or travel related pictures on LinkedIn, it has to be more inclined towards your professional life and and it has to include your education and your past experience. There are lots of recruiters on LinkedIn that hire employees for top banks in Canada. So after making your LinkedIn profile, you have to search for these recruiters and send them a message that you are looking to apply jobs in the finance industry. And if any position comes up, you are available for an in-person interview. There are many people who use LinkedIn as their number one search platform when applying for jobs in Canada. So I want you to do the same when applying for bank jobs. Now let's move forward to the third tip. Along with applying jobs online on LinkedIn, you have to start searching for jobs on other platforms as well, such as Indeed and the careers website of the Canada's leading banks. You have to look for all the available positions and apply for the ones for which you qualify. And if you do not qualify for any or if you do not have any prior experience, stay tuned and I will explain to you how you can still get the job. I myself got the job through LinkedIn, but you never know which platform will work for you. So you have to use all the platforms while applying. Now after applying online if you start receiving the interview invites then it's well and good but if not if you do not see a great response then you have to print off your resumes dress up professionally and start visiting the nearest bank locations you can visit the banks such as CIBC, TD, RBC, Bank of Montreal and if you're in Alberta you can even visit ATB Financial as well when you visit the branch uh, let the person know at the front that you want to talk to the manager and in most of the cases you will hear no because most of the branch managers have already booked their appointments and they do not accept walk-ins in that case, you can let the person at front know that you are interested in working at that bank and if any position is available right now or if will be available in the future, you will be interested in working there. But all of these tips might only work for a few people because as I've already said that it is a really competitive job market and recruiters are looking for candidates who have banking related education and experience. For example, if you are looking to apply for a role in retail banking, for example, working in a regular branch, then you need to have education in the fields of business economics, commerce, finance or accounting. If you have tried all of these other methods and none is working for you or if you do not have education in any of these fields and wondering if why am I not getting the job, here's the solution for that. Do these banking certifications to level up your game because having these certificates is really becoming a norm and people who have these certificates are considered more suitable for the jobs because they already get the insights into how banking works in Canada. First one is the IFIC Investment Funds in Canada course which is offered by the IFSC and it costs you around $200 to $300 and it takes around two to three months to complete and it gives you a basic knowledge about how Canadian banking works and the type of products offered in the Canadian banking industry. The second one that you can do is the CSC, Canadian Securities course, which is offered by CSI. It costs you around $1200 to $1300 and takes around 4 to 6 months to complete. It is a more extensive course which offers you more detailed knowledge about the Canadian banking. Both the courses are offered by the government authorized bodies and are accepted by all the leading banks in Canada. If you have a limited budget or if you are not yet sure that you want to pursue your whole career in banking, then I would say that you should go with IFIC course 
as it gives you a more competitive edge over the other candidates and you can easily get an entry level job in the bank such as that of a teller or a customer service representative or even a financial services representative but if you are okay to spend $1200 to $1300 and you're pretty sure that you want to pursue your career in Canadian banking then i would say that you should go with this CSE course because it opens lots of more doors for you. For example, if you join an entry level position in a bank and you have the CSE course, then within a few months, with just six months of experience, uh, you can start looking for better jobs with higher pay rate and you can easily get those jobs then. I'm including the links to both of these courses in the description below. And the amazing part about these both courses is that you can even do these courses from your home country even if you have not yet arrived in Canada. Even though these are basic courses that give you an opportunity to enter the Canadian banks, but there are many more courses that you will need to do when you enter the bank and you want to climb up the ladder of the pay rate and the positions. If you do any one of these two courses and follow all the tips I have listed in this video, no one can stop you from entering the banking industry in Canada. If you want a detailed video on these two courses or the job roles in Canada, let me know in the comment section. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video next week.